This is a monitoring system we designed for a telco in the Middle East, actually. And I will walk you through the two RTUs that are involved here, the master station that we selected, and then the way that alarms will trigger alert messages under this system. So let's take a look. We have on this site here, this is representative of 16 different remote sites that are going to follow this template. That's what the stack here represents. So the NetGuardian M16G2, that was the RTU that was going to be well suited to what needed to be monitored out at this site. That is a good medium sized RTU. So let's take a look at what it is pulling in. First, you have a generator, and most generators have a couple of contact closures, so those are going into the 66 block. These could be for things like, I'm running, I've had some kind of an error, I have a problem with oil pressure, I'm overheating, a variety of different alarms you can bring in off of your generators should they have contact closure outputs. Some generators will support Modbus, but that wasn't necessary here. There are two smoke detectors, so there was clearly a concern about fire and smoke. So we're able to pick that up at two different locations at the site that goes into the 66 block. And then all of those alarms are going to ride on this Amphenol cable back to the NetGuardian M16. That M16 is going to run on AC power. That's what this wall transformer does. The native voltages for NetGuardian would be negative 48 plus 24 plus 12 DC. And so if you want to run AC, we include a wall transformer with it. Then there is a D-wire temp and humidity probe. We're going to use two of those. A D-wire node is just this big, it's quite small, and what happens is, as you'll see in the diagram, it's just a little RJ12 type cable, you can crimp that yourself, you can go a couple hundred feet if you want, and it goes from the NetGuardian out to the node, and that bus powers this little box, so you don't actually have to supply power to it in any other way, and that makes it really convenient to just click that one cable in, and you're good to go. And because it's a digital protocol between the sensor and the NetGuardian, it's going to auto-discover, and you'll just tell it, uh, give it a name, where it's placed, and you're all set up. So those sensors, that actually counts as four D-wire sensors, two in each box. Each box contains a temperature and a humidity. So then if we look at another site, there was a site that had a smaller capacity requirement. So we selected a Temp Defender G2. That has about half the capacity of the M16, and there were four sites that needed it, so we were gonna include four Temp Defenders. Let's take a look at the listing here. The client wasn't incredibly specific about what needed to be monitored, but the capacity is eight discrete alarms, six analog inputs for things like battery voltage, temperature, humidity, just all sorts of sensor inputs or voltages, and then three control relay outputs to be able to control things, reach out and make adjustments from your central office. And this has four D-wire ports. So you can actually add even more of these little sensors out at that site. And in the same case, we specified DC in, but these sites had DC, so the transformer wasn't necessary. Both types of sites, all 20 of them, come back via LAN and are pulled by a Timon Mini G2. So the Timon Mini supports 16 devices natively. It's the smallest Timon model available. And with a, an expansion module, it can support up to 32. So that one expansion model was necessary here to support all 20 sites, leaving 12 to spare for future expansion under this Timon without requiring any further upgrading. So the Timon is going to pull each NetGuardian in sequence. It will happen every several seconds that it will get out to each NetGuardian. So you'll know very quickly if something is happening. And the Timon has a couple different ways to tell you what's going on. First, and I think the coolest interface is this web GFX view. This is in the web interface. You set image backgrounds, which can be maps or diagrams of your network, whatever you want, any image and then you put icons on top of it. So in this case, you can see a map where circles are gonna start blinking red or yellow or orange to tell you something's wrong, you need to look at this. And then you'd click on the icons, drill down, and you'd be able to get a picture of what's going on at that site. You can even finish at a photograph of the site itself. So when somebody's gonna go inside the hut and get into the racks of equipment, give them a picture before they leave the office. This is what you're going to look at. Go to this rack, this device, you need to work here. It's just very clear, it's a good tool to have. But you can do other things with Timon. You can send out email, which can also be translated to an SMS text notification. So that's a great way to get alerts popping up on people's phones, even if they're out of the office. That's great. They're carrying their phone before they drive a long way back to the office. Check your phone. Maybe you have some new alarms that you can take care of before you come back. So it improves your efficiency. The Timon has a web interface for configuration, so you'd set everything up there. And the web browser can do a lot of different things. You can even generate reports and export them as PDFs. So the Timon is a powerful master, particularly when you're pulling in Net Guardians and Temp Defenders, which are both remotes made by DPS. But there is protocol support for 35 or more protocols. So if you have legacy gear, anything with proprietary protocols, Timon is a very flexible device for pulling in alarms from different 
types of equipment because you never want to be in a position where you're running multiple systems like this that are incompatible. You always want everything to come into a single monitoring umbrella and Tmon is a way to do that and this was a solution we put together for this telco. If you want more information about a system like this for your own network, give us a call 1-800-693-0351. You can also check us out on the web for some more info, dpstele.com.